Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. All right. David said, uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And if you're glad tonight, lift up your hands to God and praise his wonderful and holy name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, once again for allowing us to be in this church worship service. We praise you because you are the great king. We thank you, dear Lord, for your power. We thank you, God, for your goodness. For, Lord, you are the creator, and you are worthy of the praises of your creation, Father. And we thank you this night, this time, for this gathering, dear Lord. And we thank you for being in our midst. Hallelujah to your mighty and powerful name. Amen. All right. You're going to sing? Goodbye, Lord. Goodbye. Okay, at this time, Sister Davis is going to sing a special to us as unto the Lord. Let's have church, y'all. Let's have church. Get ready to clap those hands. Get ready to praise the wonderful name of the King. All right. Sing along with her. <coughs> Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and 
gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. And, and, it, and, um, and so let's give to the, to the offering. Uh, and you can see right there in the photo section, I believe Sister David said, that uh, you can give. There's a link right there in the photo section, photos section, where you can give, all right? And so let's also be asking people about different church buildings and things. Be asking around because, uh, brothers and sisters, we, we have to move on forward. And so we want you to pray. And um, so at this time, Sister Davis, I mean, rather, Reverend Serrano is going to come and he's going to uh, minister the word of the Lord to us. God bless you, sir. Appreciate you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in church on this rainy night. <laughs> Just remember that song. Love rainy night. If you're old enough, you might remember that. I want to thank you all for joining us, for, all, for everybody who's joining us over the internet, for those of us. Uh, Joined us here tonight physically. You know, with all this uh, social distancing, it, it goes on for so long, and then you see familiar faces coming back around. It's it really is a joy. Amen. It really is a joy. If you want to join me in the Bible reading, I'll be reading from the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, chapter four. Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. And I will be reading from verse 35 on forward. Mark, chapter 4, verse 35. And the word of the Lord says, On the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awakened. And say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And for a text, I want to take verse 39. I want to concentrate on that verse right there. Basically, the message is going to be centered around that one verse, verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And for a little while, I want you to speak on a one word title Quiet. Quiet. Pastor, we ask the Lord's blessings. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, <coughs> for the moving of the Holy Spirit tonight. Lord, and for the title and for the Bible reading. Father, we ask that you will unction Reverend Serrano afresh. Make preaching easy, easy for him and, him and give him clarity of mind. Dear God, as he preaches the words of eternal life to us, the congregation. And Lord, let us focus our attention 100% on what the Spirit would have to say to us tonight. We ask all this in, in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus the Christ. And the church says, Amen. Amen. 
And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace! And I would like for us to insert the title right there. Imagine the Lord Jesus, after he, after he had been awakened out of his sleep, getting up, and put it in the modern vernacular, looking out over the over the side of the ship and saying, Quiet! Quiet! The situation nowadays, oh, let me back up a little bit. Let me back up a little bit. We tend to think that when Jesus comes around, everything else is supposed to be muted. There's nothing troubling around us. Nothing is supposed to be raising our, our hackles. We're supposed to be getting along with each other. But as I was a uh, Looking into this right here, Jesus was asleep in the middle of the storm. There's too many times that we expect God to quiet things down when he might actually be bringing the noise. Mm, all right. He might be letting the noise come to Test our hearts, if not to test, at least to strengthen. All right. Amen. At least to strengthen. Mm -hmm. We have to be mindful as we look at these passages that he in no wise was budging from his pillow until somebody woke him up. The waves didn't wake him up. All right. The wind didn't wake him up. Right. If anything, he was probably asleep very much like I sleep. There have been many times when uh, I'll ask my wife, oh, was I asleep, Mom? I said, oh, yes, you were out. Said, you were out. And many times I know I'm sleeping real good because I wake up and I know my mouth was open. My pillow is dripping wet from the saliva because I was dead asleep. And even with a house full of grandchildren and everything going on, there ain't nothing waking me up. Just because something is boisterous, because something is loud, doesn't mean we should be troubled. All right. Doesn't mean we should be troubled. The situations nowadays, my friends, I wonder if it's a test for our hearts. It's like the, the blinking game. When you get with a friend or you're doing nothing at home and you challenge each other to a stare, in, a stare down, see who, who blinks first or who starts laughing or giggling first. I usually don't last but maybe a quarter of a second. I start giggling. So I, I'm, us, I, I, I'm a big loser in that game. But you know how it is, it's like you stare each other down <coughs> and you're trying to hold your, your cheeks and your features together like you don't want to lose it. And then, of course, the one, <laughs> the first one who smiles or giggles or whatever is the loser. Is the loser. It's very loud out there right now. There are things going on in the world and in this country. And as I started saying, I wonder if, if it's a test. See who's the first one. Not that it's wrong, but there's tests coming different in different ways. And this what we read right here that happened in the book might have been a test. We right now, brothers and sisters, might be in the boat with Jesus, see who's going to be the first one to rouse him from his sleep because we're scared, because it's too loud. Maybe it was supposed to uh, take in another half a foot of water. Maybe it was supposed to. And still make it to the other side. Mm, all right. 
Maybe the winds were supposed to pick up another 50 miles per hour and still make it to the other side. Testing the hearts. All right. Who's going to be the, the loud one? All right. Who's going to be the first one to blink? All right. Who's going to be the first one to start laughing or crying in these situations and go to God, wake him up, and have him stare you down and say, Instead of calling young believer, <coughs> instead of asking why you're afraid, you lose. Mm. You lose this. You lose this round. Mm. With all this stuff going on around today, brothers and sisters, I don't. I know what it's like to be afraid, but I hate the feeling. It's not that I can't be afraid. I just hate the feeling. I don't like it. Amen. There's just like being in certain physical. Uh, everybody has their the things that they don't like. Whether it's physical, mental, uh, uh, emotional, spiritual, there are a lot of things we can't deal with. We don't like dealing with. It's just like, get it off of me. I don't want to deal with that. And fear is one of them. Not that I know what it's like to be fearful. I know what it's like. But it's a feeling that I, I detest it. I don't like being afraid. I just, I don't. And I think it's because there have been times where it was like a, the situation is a boat. When am I going to come around to my senses where I don't have to fear? Yes, there are situations that I believe that you should be in, in which you should be afraid. It gets you in, it, it gets into action. If that's God's purpose, we got to find out God's purpose in a lot of these things. It's been my experience. That when you are fearful, you tend to make a lot of noise. When something's going around uh, uh, in your life that it's just really disturbing to you, when people are, are at each other's throats, yes, maybe one party did the other party wrong. But the relationships are so complex that there might be something deeper in the victim that was woke up that caused them to lose that realm. When you're so insecure that you got to demand of the wrong of the so-called wrongdoer to kneel to kneel for his transgressions I put I'm just gonna put it simple you're insecure you're asking for stuff that is not gonna heal you <laughs> take marriage for example that's a complex situation a relationship right there and you can ask any couple you know, at least a healthy couple, I'll go with that. You know, when one, one transgresses the other, and then there's forgiveness, if, one, if the one that was done wrong asked the transgressor to kneel? Really? I, I wouldn't feel, I, I, I said, you, I, Pastor, you know me. <laughs> if you can't forgive me, don't forgive me at all. <laughs> if you want me to do that if I already admit it that I did you wrong or that or you're accusing me of something that I didn't do especially and you're lumping me in with the, a group that you detest and you're saying kneel for your transgressions Maybe they deserve that. 
But if you're asking for that, quite frankly, <laughs> you might need to go run to God and wake him up. That might be the right time to go to God. Amongst all that noise, amongst all that, that boisterous wind and the waves, that might be the right time to go to God and tell them, calm my soul. Calm my soul. That would be a good time to get God's attention. I don't think I, my wife has ever asked me to kneel when I've done her wrong. And I've never asked her to kneel when she's done me wrong. I don't think any of you have. So you just, you're insecure. You're afraid of things if you do that. Mm -hmm. You have to be. You just, you just have to be. You're so undone, so incomplete to, to do that. So undone and incomplete without God and in darkness. That's why you're making all that noise. It's because of that fear. Fear. And it's high time when we hear God in those moments. You hear him say, quiet. <coughs> For real, be quiet. All this stuff going around uh, 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 in the world and in our neck of the woods, in our nation, are we, <laughs> are we gonna go wake up God when we shouldn't be waking him up? Or dismissing him when he, we should be getting his attention? Quiet. Quiet, just like little kids. His mom, mom's been babysitting, watching them for a few hours. First few hours are fine. <laughs> they pulled out all the crayons, all their dolls, all their G.I. Joes. But then that the, the, the sun comes, starts coming down, it starts getting dark. And they're still going at it, the kids. And mom has to say, quiet. <laughs> That's enough. Settle down. Fear. Thank God for the thunder. <laughs> God for the thunder. Fear. Doesn't mean you get careless just to prove that you're not fear. Fear. Right. Yeah. People might think that I don't feel anything just because I, I like numbers. I like my I actually like my feelings to be based on facts. I don't like my feel I don't like my facts to be based on feelings. So I'm not against feeling stuff. I'm not against emotions. It's just that if I'm <laughs> if I'm gonna be mad or upset or happy about anything, I have to have a good reason for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. I have Absolutely. to have a good reason for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But my default setting is I like being happy for no good reason. Because <laughs> it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to know that Jesus is still in control. Yes. If he's drooling on his pillow right now, it's a good place for him to be. And it's a good place for me to ride out the storm in the same boat with him. All right. Amen. Amen. It's a good thing for us to be in the same boat with Jesus. If he's, if he's over there sleeping, Amen. If, it's a good thing we ride out this storm, whatever comes. Amen. I don't want to be the first one to uh, 
So I can't take no more. I'm not, and, and please do not mistake that as, as, it, as ignore God, don't worship him, and, and don't fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm I'm, you got to have the right perspective on, on this message. You, know? you got to have the right perspective. I, I guess I'm not explaining it right, but I'm not saying stop worshiping God until you kneel. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that just using this these verses as a springboard. We don't need God to calm down everything. All right. Amen. We don't need God to quiet down everything. But if he has to, if you blink first, you might have to get off that pillow, feel quiet. And then we're going to have to do it all over again. Mm. Do it all over again. Until we get used to riding the storm in the boat with him. Mm -hmm. And know that if it takes another foot of water. If it seems like that boat is going to keel over. The next time we'll know. Hey, where he said we're going to the other side. Yeah. To the other side. Amen. Amen. Okay, bro. And that's probably the best thing we can do for our God. <coughs> the best thing we can do for our God. We get so upset and angry when somebody denies us what we think is ours. All right. I wonder, here's the way I see it. I wonder if God just tallied off another year of me not doing what I'm supposed to. I'm hard with myself, man. I really am. You ought to try it. And I'm still here happy. Because you know what? As long as I stay on the boat with them, I can be hard with myself. I can question myself like that. I wonder if I disappointed you, God. But you know what? You're merciful. Yes. You're kind. You're forgiving. Yes. You're long suffering. I know those things. Yes, and my feelings are based on those facts. Amen. I'll, keep, I'll stay in the boat as long as I, I should believe those facts. Yes, Lord. I'm hard with myself, but you can do that. I don't have to tell somebody else to kneel. I, I can do that. I can do that because God loves me. And he, if he keeps on trying me, he's going he's gonna to make me a better man. He'll make each and every one of us a better person, a yeah. better woman of God, yes. a better man of God. Yes, if amen. we would just stay in the boat with him, don't blink, right out the storm. Man. That's right. Amen. At this time, as Pastor comes for the closing portion of this service, title of the message, <coughs> Quiet. Quiet. Do we trust God? We trust Jesus. Will we stay in the storm with him? It's up to you. Praise the Lord. Let us pray for a moment in your homes, wherever you're at. Reach out to God. Reach out to the Lord. Are you willing to live by faith? Do not be fearful and afraid and allow your faith in God to calm you during the time of the storm. Hallelujah, dear Lord. We appreciate you, Jesus.
Praise the Lord. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. And let's follow the message and let it bring us to another level. That's what it's all about. This is Victory Night. And really, to me, that uh, message was all about growth. you got to grow. You can't stay the same. you got to refuse to be the same. And your, your chief aim is to become more and more like God. You have to change yourself in the, in the word of the Lord, okay? And at this time, we're going to go ahead and uh, dismiss in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for all the things that you have done. And Father, keep your hands of mercy upon us, dear Lord, until we meet again Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We ask all this in the mighty and powerful and wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. And, and before we get offline, um, I want y'all to start asking people about church buildings. I'm, I, it's, it's one thing to look it up online. I, I really don't want to do the looking up online because you're not going to find anything. But, there, but there's a church building out there somewhere that's real nice. And, um, and, and so we're going to put this thing together, okay? So at this time, let's go ahead and get out of here. God bless you real good. Sunday morning.